All right, we're back in the chuck here. Um, we're ready to machine the other end of our uh, compound screw. Now we're gonna have to leave a register here of 0.125, which I have marked out, a little scribe mark there already. So I'm gonna machine this down to that. Now I know we have extra metal on this. We have about a half inch extra, but that half inch extra I'm gonna leave on the the um, threaded side where the little nut will go here so it'll stick out far enough I'll put the nut on and then I'll cut it off and then just grind it flush so this shank up until here the largest diameter on that is half an inch so I need to machine this down to half an inch now we're grabbing it by the threads, but I have paper in between each jaw. And I marked, this is that half inch uh, register that we had before. I ran a dial indicator on that, and then got that collar itself reading zero. Now you can see, I don't know how well it'll show up on the camera, but there's actually, let me throw a dial indicator in there and show you how much run out there is. Alright, I just have a dial indicator on the unmachined portion of that bar. You can see we have about five or six thousandths run out, but that's okay because we're running true on this collar, so it doesn't make a difference where we're running on this because we're going to be taking. Yep. 80 thousandths off of the larger diameter here so we'll have a perfectly straight cut and concentric with the rest of our screw which is what we want um, which is why when, when it, if you were to machine this one now I'm using my buck adjust true you might have seen it on some of the other videos I can adjust this to get this running perfectly true um, if you were to do this you could use a three jaw to do the screw and everything else because once you machine it down that'll be perfectly concentric because you cut enough off to make even if your chuck has uh, you know new chucks three to five thousandths run out you'll be taking that out when you cut but when you flip this around you're gonna need some some way of adjusting it so you're gonna need a um, a four jaw or something of the like or you're gonna have to take the pain in the ass route of shimming each jaw individually to get this to run straight so you want everything concentric, you don't want any wobble in that shaft, otherwise it's going to bind as you move your screw. So I'm going to take this whole thing down to half an inch, leaving uh, up to this mark. And we're going to do just like we did before. We're going, we're going to um, square off this cut, and then I'll take that 80 thousandths off of this. Um, I, it's just easier for me to do it that way rather than take the 80 thousandths off now and then keep going down so that's the way I'm gonna do it all right we're just finishing up our last pass here of our half inch diameter um, I mic the other side of the cut and we're at 501 thousandths which is perfectly fine because I need clearance for my dial that we're gonna use and when I mic this out I use my calipers I end up with 503,000, so that gives me 2,000 clearance for this to spin on that shaft for you to set your zero. When you finish up this cut, I'm going to square off that collar just like we did before, and then I'm going to skim that larger diameter there down to the size we need, which Point nine two zero. All right, I uh, squared off this shoulder here. I have this uh, collar down to the right width, and I took the skim cut across the top to bring this down to the correct diameter, which is point nine two zero. Now that's slightly smaller than the largest part of the bearing that's going there, which is going to be my carrier. Um, that way there I have in other words this isn't rubbing when we put this when we make the bushing and everything for it 
this isn't going to be rubbing up the ed around the edge and this has a it's going to have about a thousandth of um, clearance on either side here for it to be able to rotate smoothly without gouging up or um, binding now we can go by the plants now roughly but we have to double check our measurements because uh, these bearings might not be exactly on what we had before they're actually about a half a thousandth over it's not by much but you just have to make sure that uh, you get what you get because what we're gonna do well, what's gonna happen here is those bearings are gonna ride against the collar we're gonna make a plate that's gonna capture them right here and then on the other side of that plate is going to be our collar. Now remember I said I was about a half a thousandth over on this. I polished that half thousandth off with some sandpaper to get a nice sliding fit on this. So I can spin it around and you're going to be able to set it. This set screw will hold it in place. So what we have, what I need to do, and since we're not going to make our own dial, I have to figure out the thickness of this, the thickness that that's going to be, plus the thickness of my plate that we're going to need to cut this for the uh, ball crank that's going on. Now I want to leave a thousandth, at least a thousandth of clearance between the end of this and where the ball crank starts. The reason why is if I'm off any, if, you know, if, the ball, if that shoulder that the ball crank rides on is under this collar, you're not going to be able to turn it. So I need at least a thousand to be able to move this around and turn it and set our zero to where we want it. So I have to double check all my measurements now and make sure that I cut this down to where we need it. Okay, we double checked all our measurements. And I come out with uh, 1.121 for all the dimensions I need. That's the bare minimum. We're going to go a thousand over that. So we're going to go be going at the very least 1.121. Whoever's calling me right now can wait. Um, yeah, well, 1.122 is what we're going to go to. While I was at it, I also double checked the diameter of my ball crank on the, these plants here. It's 0.3135. On mine, it's 0.312. Uh, 0.3127. I'm going to cut it 0.313. That gives me enough to be able to slide it on and be able to wiggle around a little bit to get it to where I need. So I would I would have been about half a thousand over. It's not a huge thing, but you know, might as well double check everything since we can. So I'm gonna cut this part down here now, or cut this part to this shoulder that we need. This this, this length right here is what I'm gonna be cutting. I'll leave this a half inch diameter. That's where our collar and our bearings are gonna sit. Okay, as you can see, um, I've got this down to the size that I wanted, um, or the length that I wanted, rather. I have this down to the size that'll fit my ball crank. goes on there nice and tight, right up to the shoulder. So now what I, want, what I need to do is reduce this diameter here to be able to take the uh, 1224 thread. So it's going to be .214 on this but I want to go if you can see there's a shoulder inside that ball crank so you don't want to take the length of this and cut your shoulder to that you want to go a little bit deeper to that shoulder um, actually below that shoulder so you're able to tighten a nut on it and it'll squeeze it together so the the um, actually the point the point three two five yeah in specified in the drawings is below this shoulder by uh, maybe about five thousandths or so so that's more than enough so I'm gonna take this down to the the uh, the diameter for the thread cut that shoulder square and then I'll show you how we thread and we're almost through I like I said before I cut this down to the 313 thousandths diameter I polished off with some memory cloth and sandpaper that a uh, extra couple of tenths on this. I I'm sorry, this is, this was uh, 500,000, so let's talk about this one. It's 313,000, so I polished off that extra couple of tenths with some emery cloth to get the, the, uh, 
ball crank here to fit nice and tight. You can see we're way long on our threaded portion, but that's that's perfectly fine. I'm gonna thread the whole thing, figure out how much I need, and then I'll grind it off on my grinder. Uh, I find that a lot easier that way. It gives me a little bit of room to play with. It gives me some room to put the center in. Um, I cut the center off. I didn't part it off because this is too thin. I don't want this to bend at all. So I cut it off with a hacksaw um, in the lathe. I know it's not the most machinist thing to do, but hell, it works. I radius this edge, and uh, now we're going to thread. So let me set up above and show you how an easy way to thread that thread. All right, since this thread is so small, um, we are going to be using the tap wrench to cut it rather than the lathe. And also, since this part is too so small, I don't want to risk snapping it off for any reason. So the die is the way to go. Now you don't. The only issue is when you try to put it on here, you have no way of checking your alignment with your part. We know this is perfectly straight and concentric with the axis of the lathe. So this is the easiest way that I have found to be able to tap on, on the lathe. I mean, you can ha get any kind of um, tailstock contraption and everything else like that that you can think of, but this is very easy, especially if you have a quick change tool post like this. In there right now, I have my boring bar holder. The reason why I have that is because it has a nice flat surface on the side, and it's very big. So we, want, we need to square that up without knocking my camera over. Now square it up against the chuck. All right, now that now that's perfectly square, and it's going to be perfectly square with the end of this piece. Now, we zoom in for a little bit of a better view. cutting oil on there. I'm going to hold this die flat against that block and I'll line it right in the middle and this wrench will it is small enough to clear my carriage and then with firm pressure on my carriage feed I'm going to be holding that die against Keep going, keep going until you feel everything engage. And there you go. Now I'm to the end of that die. I'm perfectly square. I can finish up the rest of my thread, which I'll do now. Alrighty, so here's our finished product. Uh, like I said, I gotta tighten this down, just figure out where I gotta trim that. Here's our collar. This is our plate. It's not cut yet. I'm just using this as a spacer for the time being. One set of bearings and the other set of bearings. And this turns smoothly on that shaft so you can reset it. And uh, this gap right here will be smaller. This is only 55 thousandths thick. So I'm going to put a 120 thousandths um, yeah, plate in there. So add this plus the two thousandths clearance for that. This collar should be about sixty-six thousandths. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we did sixty. And sixty-six thousandths. And yeah, uh, that's actually pretty, pretty damn close right on there so we'll have a thousandth uh, of clearance against this collar there to be able to turn this and uh, now it's on to the bushing <laughs> 